Hi everybody, uh, welcome to our today's video and uh, before we go ahead, do subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon so that you can have uh, the notifications for our new videos and you can benefit from our free 5G and 4G content. So today our topic, uh, it's a very interesting and a very detailed topic. Uh, the topic is LP handover and mobility optimization. Mobility or handover optimization is one of the key aspects uh, when it comes to optimizing any network because handover uh, is the function that enables uh, one user uh, as it is uh, getting LTE services which can be anything to move from one service area of a cell to another service area. So uh, we will take this in steps and today uh, we will go through some of the basics and some uh, of the very key concepts associated with mobility and handover optimization. So let's begin. The first uh, thing uh, to note in LTE is that uh, as compared to WCDMA, where we have a soft handover, uh, again in LT, we have a hard handover. So what does hard handover means? A hard handover means that whenever a UE is handed over from one UE to uh, one uh, E node B to another E node B, uh, there the connection from the first E node B is broken and then the UE connects to, uh, to the other E node B. So there is no soft handover as we had uh, in WCDMA where we had the concept of active set and etc. So that is the first thing. Then uh, we have the concepts that is the basic concept of handovers that is measurement configuration. Then we have measurement reporting. Then we have handover evaluation and then we have handover execution. What uh, the key aspect of LTE is that your measurement reporting can be configured based on certain events. So that is the part of measurement configuration. And as the UE with this RSRP or RSRQ uh, goes through different levels, then it crosses different thresholds. And according to that, certain measurement reports are uh, triggered and the UE then provides those measurement reports. So measurement configuration is basically how you configure those thresholds. And then measurement reporting is when those thresholds are uh, crossed or met, then what do you report and in which format do you report? Then we have your handover evaluation. So handover evaluation uh, is done by your E node B. So once it has the measurement reports from your uh, UE, then it basically sees what is the RSRP of the, U, of the UE. Uh, is being served by that E node B, then it sees the RSRP of the neighboring E node Bs and as per the formula, as per the threshold, as per the offset settings, it then decides about the handover. Then the final part is handover execution and in handover execution basically you have your release commands, then you have your handover command where you send the handover command to the UE so that it can hand it over to the next E node B. We will discuss that uh, in a later lecture where we have all the uh, signal flow diagrams. So this is the basic concept of a handover which is divided into four parts. Then uh, we have the RRC connection management. So in LTE basically we have two states. Uh, one is your RRC connected and the other is RRC idle. So in RRC connected state, basically uh, what it means is that we have a signaling radio bearer attached to the network that is your SRB and basically handovers uh, are, the, um, are the mobility carriers in your RRC connected state. Then in your RRC idle state, basically your cell selection and reselection are the uh, carriers for uh, mobility so that your cell can be camped in one cell and then it can reselect another cell. Then the other concept is types. What are the types of handovers in LTE? 
in LTE we have intrafrequency handovers, interfrequency handovers, service triggered handovers, coverage triggered handovers, subscriber triggered handovers, and we have your IRAT handovers where basically uh, you hand over from LTE to 2G or 3G as per uh, the absence of LTE coverage. So those are your types of uh, handovers. Then we have uh, load balancing handovers. So for example, if you have two uh, LTE carriers, one is your 900 uh, carrier, the other is your 1800 carrier. So basically you can have a load balancing handover where you want your traffic to be on L18 or on L26. So you basically hand over based on the load. Then you can have your coverage handovers uh, that you have your better cell handovers. Those part of both intra and inter handovers. Another concept is your measurement reports. Uh, measurement reports basically uh, are the main uh, key element which basically provide the information uh, from the UA to the E node B about RSRP, RSRQ, CQI information and based on that the <coughs> formulas for the handovers are calculated and decisions are made. So measurement reports consist of measurement object and then measurement configuration and the measurement object basically defines uh, the technology and the frequency. So basically if uh, you are uh, uh, going through measurements for intra-frequency ha LTE handover, then it will define the technology as LTE and the frequency as particular that frequency. If you are going for IRAT handovers, then the technology probably will be the WCDMA and the frequency will define whichever frequency you are basically measuring for that measurement report. Then the configuration basically is about the format and the criteria and the criteria and the format so the criteria comes from which event has happened and we will define those events here so the in like uh, if we compare it to GSM where you have your standard measurement report and it does not differ how it is triggered or how it is uh, there are other events but in this the criteria for example you are using RSRQ uh, based interfrequency you are based using RSRP intrafrequency so there is if a particular criteria for a particular event has been met and then the format the type of information that will be included in the measurement report so we all of this goes into a ID so we have a uh, individual ID for each kind of measurement reports that is one thing then we come to events so in LTE uh, there are this periodic reporting for example uh, after a certain amount of time the mobile will report to your E node B about certain aspects of the radio network for example RSRP, RSRQ and other elements but other than that we have events and events are for example we have A1, A2, A3, A4, A5 then we have B1, B2, B3 and these events these one they hold for both intrafrequency and interfrequency and our <coughs> thresholds are according to that so if I include A0 as well that is a periodic event so a1 is basically the event uh, where your serving cell is better than the threshold then your a2 is basically your serving cell is poorer than a particular threshold then your a3 event is basically your serving cell is poorer than the threshold and your neighboring cell is better than a particular threshold then a4 is basically another event where your serving cell is poorer than a particular threshold but this is used basically for load balancing and other stuff and in A5 your serving cell it's a combination that your serving cell is poorer than a particular threshold and a your neighbor cell is better than a particular threshold similarly we have B1, B2 and B3 and these events usually cover your IRAT part 
if we move to these thresholds then we can look at these thresholds these are the basic threshold concepts for lp so we move if you see that this is the direction where your rs rp is getting poorer this is the poorest rs rp Threshold 1 is defined when the mobile basically starts the measurement reporting. So if your signal level or your signal quality is better than this threshold 1, it will not be doing any measurement reporting. So that is in order to save your battery life because in order to measurement report, uh, your mobile will have to come into the active state. Then we have a threshold 2A. When this threshold 2A is passed, after that, we introduce a concept called measurement gap. I will come to this measurement gap later. But measurement gap is basically, it provides your mobile with the time to switch to the frequency of another carrier in LTE or switch to the frequency of another technology. For example, it has to switch to GSM frequency or it has to switch to WCDMA frequency or it has to switch to another frequency carrier of LT to measure on those particular neighbors. So after this threshold passes, we have those measurement gaps. And if on the contrary, if your signal level improves on this, it comes behind here, then the measurement gap is finished so that your mobile can again go back to the DRX DRX cycles and it can save battery life. Then we have the interfrequency threshold. So as the uh, <clears throat> in terms of setting up uh, our thresholds, the next threshold is for the interfrequency handover. And after that, we have the threshold for WCDMA handover. And then after that, we have the GSM. And in the end, we have the threshold when we want to release the RRC connection or redirect it to any other carrier or any other uh, uh, frequency. That is one thing. The last thing is hysteresis and offsets. Hysteresis <coughs> is a concept basically used to avoid ping pong handovers basically. What happens is that if you only work on the threshold, for example, you have your threshold is neg 95. So if your level is neg 94 and it goes to neg 95, a handover will be executed. And if it comes back, then another handover will be executed. So we keep a hysteresis. So this is your <coughs> neg 95 and this is your neg 98. So this is a window where if a handover has happened, the mobile will remain in this window to avoid ping pong handovers. This is the concept of hysteresis. And for offsets, we can set offsets based on, for example, if you want to push the traffic to a particular cell, if there is indoor outdoor cells, for example, there are interfrequency cells, then offsets basically are used to basically aggressively push traffic towards the cell or avoid traffic from a particular cell. So these are some of the basic concepts which we will use uh, in any training uh, that we will be publishing for LT handover and mobility optimization. And uh, we will also follow up with further lectures on uh, LT mobility optimization, uh, which will give us uh, more details about thresholds, about hysteresis, about events, and more importantly, about the types of handovers as well. So uh, we will see you in, in our, our next video. And I hope this video has helped you in understanding LT mobility and do not forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you.